also haven't seen this in a while over in the meat department. Empty. Over here, a little bit empty. A little bit of stuff here. It could be because maybe it's repacking day, but there is a significant n noticeable shortage of certain things. Even the chicken is looking a little scarce. Nothing crazy. I mean, there's obviously still stuff here, but not at all like it normally is. It's normally about four deep over here the whole way through. So we're going to start this off this way. Do you see this here? All right. I know it's fast, but I just want to show you. Chickens have not been genetically modified. There are no GMO chickens. Chickens are carefully bred to get larger, faster growing chickens. Chickens have been bred for centuries to get more beautiful chickens, to get chickens that lay more eggs per year, to be larger or smaller, to be less broody, or to be more hardy or and to be more hardy. Now, also on the same token, if you will, according to the USDA, eggs are not genetically modified either or bioengineered. This includes shell eggs and eggs used for processed egg products. Only traditional breeding techniques are used to raise laying hens in the United States. Neither chickens nor eggs are modified by genetic engineering. Until now. Y'all, I don't think you understand this. Um, <laughs> so we've talked numerous times about how there is now cell cultured chicken, lab grown chicken that is, you know, they didn't have to grow a whole entire chicken. They take these cells and they make their own chicken in a lab. It's boneless. It's featherless. It's beakless. There's no uh, wings. There's no feet. There's nothing else. It's literally just like the body of the chicken, if you will, um, minus all the bones. And so that's like the future of chicken. Well, unfortunately, there's another future of chicken that sucks. Let me just be completely blunt with it and say it just like that. It sucks because now you can't trust anything. Before it was, well, when you go to the grocery store, make sure that you buy bone-in chicken. That way you'll know it's real. Okay, it might still be real, but it's about to make a major change that none of us want, that none of us are ready for. And they're going to say it's all to protect us. Um, technically it's in the name of science at the same time, but they're going to claim that the reason it's being done is to ensure that in the future, we don't have to go through those egg shortages, those chicken shortages that we did, um, maybe six months ago to a year ago. Although I've looked up numbers and the shortages, they don't seem like they were real. They were just manufactured for the grocery stores, if you will. We'll talk about that on a different day. I'm trying to get all the numbers together so I can bring facts to the table with that one. Um, because y'all know I much prefer facts. Yes, there's opinions and thoughts mingled in, uh, intermingled, if you will, but there's facts in everything I bring to you. So this one here, gene editing can make chickens resistant to bird flu. Guess what we're about to do, boys and girls? Some really dumb shit. That's what we're about to do. You ready? Oh, chickens genetically modified to be impervious to bird flu may one day prevent the spread of the disease on farms. Just small tweaks to a single gene made chickens resistant to an avian influenza infection. Uh, researchers report October 10th in Nature Communications. The gene, known as ANP32A, provides the instructions that tell chicken cells how to make a protein that flu viruses rely on to successfully hijack cells, disrupting the avian virus's ability to co commandeer the protein stopped most genetically edited birds from getting infected. Testing the gene editing in such an ubiquitous agricultural animal that's susceptible to bird flu makes the new study especially impactful and important, says Jacob Yount, a viral immune y'all me with these words, immuno, all immunologist, Im immunologist, however you want to like pronounce that, wherever the, the emphasis goes on the syllables, I have no friggin' clue. Immunologist, immunologist, whatever at Ohio state university in Columbia in Columbus, who wasn't involved in the research one, Jacob, why are you talking? If you're not part of the research, I want to talk to whoever's in this research, but anyway, the virus can rapidly spread among birds on poultry farms, sometimes with devastating consequences, especially when one bird is, you're told that it tested positive. So then they tell you to kill your entire flock, put them all down, every single last one of them, based on one test that says that bird had the flu. Although we all know that there's been tests that have been done that have given false positives and false negatives and stuff like that before. So who's to say that didn't happen with the birds also? But anyway, 
Beginning in 2022, an outbreak hit the global poultry industry hard, pushing farmers to cull millions of birds in the United States alone. After a summer lull on October 4th, a turkey farm in South Dakota confirmed the first case on a U.S. poultry farm since April, affecting around 47,300 birds, which really I'm guessing is going to explain, or they're going to use it as an explanation on what we just saw at Sam's Club today. And they're going to say, guess what? It's right around the corner because October 4th, that's a really quick timeline from October 4th to what's today, the 11th or the 12th or something. I don't even know what today is. 11th. It's really quick to start the, the new shortage. And what do you know? It's right before next holiday season ro rolls around. Like this seems really, um, what's the right word? Deja vu. -y. While many avian flu strains cause only mild illness in birds, such deadly strains like the one behind the global outbreak can kill domesticated and wild birds. Chickens also occasionally transmit flu to farm animals like pigs or less often people. Ideally, genetic editing would completely stop the virus from replicating inside the animals so it can't pose a risk to birds or people at all. But in the new study, some edited chickens still got infected, meaning the technique isn't yet 100% effective. The new research isn't all the way there yet, but I think it's an amazing first step and an amazing proof of concept, Yount says. Vaccines to defend poultry from flu exist, but the tactic is expensive and the virus swiftly adapts to evade that protection, developmental biologist Mike McGrew of the University of Edinburgh said in an October 5th news conference. Gene editing, on the other hand, offers a way to make permanent changes that leave an animal resistant to a particular disease. ANP32A is a good gene to tweak in chickens because it's absolutely essential for the virus's replication, virologist Wendy Barclay of Imperial College London said at the news conference. In the study, Barclay, uh, McGrew, and other colleagues made two changes to ANP32A using the molecular scissors CRISPR backslash CAS9 so that the gene's protein could no longer interact with avian flu viruses. After monitoring the birds for two years, so for two years, they've been gene editing chickens in these studies. The edited chickens were healthy and hens laid eggs normally, just like unedited birds. Genetic engineer Aliwo Odoko Oka of the University of Bristol in England said at the news conference, I wonder if they ate those eggs. That's my question. Did you eat the eggs? Did they taste like real eggs? Did, do you feel funny afterwards? The team then placed 10 normal and 10 gene edited chicks in separate incubators and exposed them to a dose of around 1000 infectious particles of avian influenza directly in the nasal cavity. Listen, I understand animal testing, but when you read about it, it's kind of like, it sounds not very nice, right? Um, the strain was one that could infect the birds, but not make them severely ill. A day later, the two groups of two-week-old chicks were then each joined by 10 unexposed peers called sentinels. The unedited birds were paired with unedited sentinels, and gene-edited birds were paired with gene-edited sentinels. Sentinels. Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, the matrix. All 10 unedited chickens got infected and had high levels of virus in their bodies, and so did seven of their sentinels. Only one of the gene-edited birds contacted the virus. I would like to also let you know, two-week-old chicks... Well, yeah, they're going to get sick. They have no antibodies. They have nothing built up. They have no immune system at this point. That's like, that's why you're not supposed to kiss babies and cough on babies and manhandle babies because they don't have an immune system yet. That's why kids, when they first go into like kindergarten and stuff like that, especially if they've been at home with mom and dad pretty much all the time and no daycares or anything, their immune system is a little eh, wonky, if you will, because they haven't been, I guess the word's exposed to a lot of stuff. And then of course the, the cold start and the what is that foot and mouth disease, all that fun stuff, pink eye, all that, all that stuff starts, right? But then the bodies get used to it and then you stop getting it and then you learn how to fight against it. But uh, two week old chicks, I mean, of course they're going to get the avian flu when you jam a thousand whatever's up, up their nose, like beaks, nasal cavities. I guess I said na nasal cavities for a reason. Chickens don't have noses. They have beaks and inside their beaks are their nasal cavities. So I guess that works either way. Either way, this feels like a skewed study in, in my opinion, but that's whatever. It says here that infected modified bird had low levels of virus and it didn't transmit the virus to any of the edited sentinels. Oh, this sounds real familiar too. Remember there was another thing over the last however long where if you got this thing, you, you weren't going to get the thing, but then people still got the thing. 
And but then they were like, but I already had the thing, so why am I still getting the thing? Like, can somebody explain it? And well, the birds are going through the same thing, y'all. Um, that infected modified bird had low levels of virus and it didn't transmit the virus to any of the edited sentinels, but we felt that it would be the responsible thing to be more rigorous to stress test this and ask, are these chickens truly resistant? So the researchers repeated the experiment, exposing chickens to a thousand times as much virus as before and about 1 million infectious particles, an abnormally high dose that contains more virus than the birds would likely be exposed to on poultry farms. That just sounds evil at this point, just so we're all fully aware. The team also mixed in both unedited and edited sentinels with exposed chickens. In one incubator, all the normal chickens got infected and transmitted the virus to every unedited sentinel. No edited sentinel birds in the incubator caught the flu. In the other incubator, five of 10 modified chickens became infected after exposure, transmitting the virus to one unedited sentinel, but no edited ones. That suggests that even though the virus could infect chicks at high doses, the animals weren't very contagious. Viruses from the gene edited chickens that got infected had adapted in ways that allowed the virus to ditch their reliance on the AP on the ANP 32 a protein and instead co-opt two other proteins in the same family to replicate. That means editing more than one gene may be necessary to make chickens fully resistant to flu. Do you see where we're going here? So they tried to edit one gene and they're like, look, just tweak this one little thing over here. Maybe nobody will notice. Tweak this one and it'll make them so they don't get sick so much. Oh, that didn't work? Oh, so you mean we're gonna try it harder to tweak it? Like give it like, I don't know, like a second dose or something? And then that should do it? Oh, that didn't do it either? Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna have to like throw a bunch of different doses of this stuff at it to see if it'll stop getting sick or whatever. And then when the body got used to that, two other cells were like, hey, you, you, come here, come here. You wanna like get together and wreak havoc and make it sick? And they're like, yeah. And so then that's what happened. So although they were trying to mess with this one gene and make it so that it couldn't get sick, these other genes were like, hey, listen, we just need to get sick. I mean, that's all there is to it. We just need to get sick. So I see what you're doing over here, but just let us get sick and then we'll be on our way. And that's pretty much what's happening with these birds. That's what it sounds like. If this was a disease that only infected chickens, then the resistance that we created would be better than what we could get with a vaccine, McGrew said, but because there is a zoonotic disease and can be spread potentially to humans, we really need to aim for complete resistance. I would also like to point that part out. They keep using the maybe, possibly, potentially to humans because as soon as you throw the word humans in there, guess what happens? Humans start to go, oh no, not me, ew, no, fix it, I don't want it, take it away. And so they have the ability to convince you that this is for your own good, humans, when in actuality, no, like it's not for us. I don't, it's for their dollars. It's for their, their money, their profits over people, because the less chickens that die, the less chickens they have to kill, the more money they can still make, the more money they won't lose. And it all comes down to that in the long run. They're going to tell you it's for you and me, boo-boo. It's so that you don't get sick and I don't get sick, but we've had a maybe, a possibly, and a potentially here, and not one single definitive we can get sick from these birds. So I like how you're trying to sugarcoat it, but it's still shit, y'all, just so you know. This says, eliminating all three A and P32 genes from chicken cells grown in a lab dish stopped the virus from replicating at all. But because having at least some ANP32 proteins may be important for developing chick brains, bones, and hearts, that strategy might cause problems for live chickens. Well, here's the, here's the question. Um, have you seen some of the chickens that we eat? I don't know if you paid attention, but like the way they're caged in and stuff, I don't think they have brains and their hearts are all messed up and their bones are all broken anyway because their bodies are too fat and there's all kinds of issues. So again, anyway. more work is needed to figure out if that is true, Yount says, and whether other genes outside of the ANP32 family might also be good candidates for editing. Just edit all of them. Just F them all up. You know, who needs real chicken genes anymore? Just turn it into whatever you want to turn it into. The use of genetically modified organisms in agriculture is not without controversy. You don't say. But it's important to continue such work in chickens, um, Idoko Ako said, so that when, so that then when maybe it becomes widely or more culturally accepted, we can take advantage of the technology. So that's where we are with chickens. Um, 
not happy about it. Not going to lie. There are plenty of people out there that say, oh my gosh, Michelle, you're so overreacting. There's nothing wrong with bioengineered foods. Bullshit. That, that's all I want to say. We don't know that for a fact. It would be better if they would just leave shit alone. <laughs> I don't know who else agrees with that, but leave it alone. Stop messing with my food. Let me eat actual factual chickens, not stuff you've gone and tinkered in and messed around with and turned into some little whatever. Stop it. Okay. Because here's the problem. They're going to keep messing with the foods that we eat and giving them antibiotics or changing their genes or giving them this or that. And then it's going to destroy our immune systems. It's going to mess with our bodies and how our bodies react to things. And then it's all going to be a massive shit show. So quit messing with the food. Okay. So that's what I have for that. So I love you all immensely. What are we going to eat besides chicken and beef? Cause they're making the salmon now They're making the pork. I don't know what's left. I know there's something, <laughs> but the second that they start legitimately genetically modifying these chickens and that's what's on your shelves, it's everything's hell in a handbasket at that point. Once they can get away with chickens, the, the sky's the limit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The farm, the whole farm. So there's that. Hey y'all, I love you. Thanks for hanging out here, Squirrel Tribe. Here's a little bit more of a, what happened at Sam's Club today. I think you need to see. See you guys on the next one. Bye. So I'm in Sam's Club and I thought this was interesting to see that they have the mask back and for such a cheap price. But then I went right next to it and they have those on sale for $14.88 now instead of $17.88. Just in case anybody was curious. So I just talked about this kind of thing in yesterday's video about trans fat and the hydro... No, I can't think of the word. Hydrogenated stuff. And then I came across this new hydrolyzed protein which I hadn't seen before. And they have it here at Sam's Club. And I'm still not sure if hydrolyze is actually good for you in the long term or not based off what I saw and read yesterday. I need to do a little bit more research on that. If anybody takes this kind of protein powder, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings in the comment section. Yeah, well, I've said it before. There's not going to be shortages of BS kind of food. There's going to be plenty of you know, whatever this is, soy sauce and barbecue sauces and mayonnaises and stuff like that because this is easy to manufacture with fake ingredients and all that other kind of crap. The shelves here at Sam's Club are literally to the rafters of just BS food, honestly. Now they do have 100% pure olive oil, right? Which we've talked about is supposed to be better for you than peanut oil if you want to do high heat cooking with anything. Extra virgin olive oil if you want for like salads and whatnots, right? I always go for the organic one personally. $17.48 for the organic. $21.84 over here. This is an extra liter, but you're at, let's see, $7.28 per liter, $8.74 per liter. To me, $1.50 more for organic makes sense. Then you have your Bert Bertoli olive oil, extra light taste. That one's on clearance, so just so you guys know. Tons and tons of different olive oils to choose from. And then they used to have like avocado oil. Here we go. Avocado oil, your coconut oils, and then of course all your sprays. But I think they even have, what is this, vegetable oil? Yeah, so we're staying away from vegetable oil. Uh, personally, I have zero interest in this. Look, zero grams trans fat knowing good and damn well if you watched yesterday's video that as long as it's under 0.5 grams per serving they can tell you it's zero in a serving size being one tablespoon if there's 0.5 grams in every single one tablespoon it will start to add up boys and girls i don't know anybody that actually buys canola oil unless maybe you run a restaurant same thing with the corn oil if you guys use these things in your home I'd really like to hear about it and know what you use it for and why you choose canola or corn oil or even vegetable oil over anything else. If you guys would help educate me and others in the comment section, I would appreciate you greatly. Now, obviously, I would like to point out that I'm not telling people not to go out and buy food. Get what you can with what money you have and everything else like that. I'm just wanting to point out how crazy it is that the shelves are so incredibly full of the stuff that literally is processed and meant to harm us and very hard to find sometimes fresh fruits fresh vegetables a good meat you know a grass-fed grass-finished beef is almost impossible to find a organic uh, pasture-raised chicken almost impossible to find yet 
all these kind of things. I mean, the odds we're gonna run out of any of this? Pfft. Now I will say, no matter what, there's one food I cannot bring myself to eat. Maybe if I was literally, it was either eat that or die. I might possibly, but even then I'm gonna hold my nose so I can't taste it. Maple flavored Spam? Really? Is pumpkin spice flavored Spam coming out next? Because this doesn't make sense to me. One of the main things I come to Sam's Club for are their eggs. Pasture is great, but I normally come here for the organic ones. That They're not pasture but they're at least organic. But today here at my Sam's Club, and it is, what day is today? Hump day, my dudes. It is Wednesday. There's a few of the pasture You have a few, some of your cage-free, some of your big old boxes, but that's it. Normally, and there's a few more up at the very top, but they don't have any of the organic ones. And those, I have noticed, have been kind of short in a lot of places, whether it's Sam's Club, Whole Foods, Publix, the organic ones are getting harder to find.